When you're not armed, but your attacker is, the 5Ds plus one is how you protect yourself. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of the Philippines. Here we see a disgruntled employee who is going to attack his coworkers and it's gonna end up going badly for him. And we're gonna learn important lessons here about getting out of the danger zone. But if that's not available to us, we're gonna learn about closing the distance and practicing the 5Ds plus one. If you go read the news story on this one, our attacker is angry because of his working conditions. He's gonna come from the right as the attack has started and what you see is one of his intended victims heads for the door and tries to open it, but he can't get out in time, but he does duck the shot that came in and now he's in a hand fight for the guy's gun and he's gonna get him down on the ground. Thankfully, he slipped there and then the news story that shared this stopped it right here and didn't show us this coup de gras that he has here and it jumps and does a whole bunch of stuff, but the news story says he hit him with the chair and then our good guy's able to hold him there, thankfully, until police arrive. And that guy crawling in was somebody who was actually shot by our attacker. And again, the new story I have says he made it. Let's think about some lessons out of this one. First one, I do like that our intended victim seeks to get out of there first. Getting out of the danger zone is a great strategy if you can. I mean, I, again, you'd think, well, maybe he's got to protect everybody else around there, but you're not necessarily obligated to do that. And if you can get out of the danger zone without endangering yourself, that's a good option. But he couldn't. And here we see the FIBSA factor here, you know, fudge, I'm being shot at, and this guy gets a duck in. And you know, this can't be more than about two and a half yards or so, but he misses, that happens. And our, our victim here comes around and looks like he slaps him upside the face there while he deflects. So we get a deflect, a beginning of dominate and a distract all at the same time in those five Ds plus one. Now you see our bag of here is trying to pull that gun back and that's pretty common. He'll use the leveraging arm and then try to pull that gun back, which is why we say you have to dominate, dominate the gun, dominate the arm with the gun so that he can't pull that back. And thankfully he wasn't able to because of the dominance and therefore that got him down. Now he gets some help here and unfortunately we don't get to see the coup de gras just because of the way that the news story was uh, released by the media. But having a partner in the fight to help you certainly does go a long way to get a distract there. Now he didn't get a, a, a disarm here. And we wanna think about that for just a minute. Sometimes holding him down until the help arrives, until somebody else can get some help there, is the best that you can do as long as you can maintain that positional dominance and maintain dominance over the tool so he can't get it back to you. And if that's as best you can do until help arrives, hey, that's what you can do and you go for it. So in an overall sense, this intended victim did a pretty good job. He practiced those five Ds plus one when he had to, tried to get out of the danger zone, ended the threat and covered his ASP.